All right, lesson 8-2, testing claim about proportions. Our key idea here is reviewing these hypothesis tests and then using technology to do what we would call an exact method instead of the approximation method that we're using in the hypothesis test. All right, so it's a bit of a review, 8-1. Um, right at the end, there's uh, kind of a new slash review idea. So the uh, reviewing the normal approximation methods, this is the p-value method, um, where we first of all need to check our requirements. And I'm going to do my example side by side. So these are the basic five requirements. You've got to have a simple random sample. You've got to have a fixed number of trials. They all need to be independent. There's got to be a success failure, and our probability of success has to remain constant throughout the process. And in our drone example, um, we assume the simple random sample, and then everything else is given to us. We have 100,009 uh, independent uh, samples. There's two categories. They're either comfortable or not comfortable. So we have a probability of success and failure, and our NP times NQ are both greater than five because N is so big. Therefore, chick, 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 we're all done. We've got that met. So the first thing we do is we um, ID the claim, not the claim, the claim. So more than 50% of Americans are uncomfortable with robots delivering. So P is greater than 0.5. So our alternative then, number two, is P is less than or equal to negative 0.5. We then establish what are the null and the alternate hypothesis. So again, the null hypothesis is P equals 0.5, and the alternative then would be our original claim, which is P is greater than 0.5. Our significance level is 0.5, that's our alpha. This is where we are um, kind of uncertain because it's so far out there um, we can't attribute that to just chance. Something else must have caused that. The final we have to determine is which statistic are we going to use? Well, it's kind of obvious. We're using proportions, so we got to use this Z uh, stat. And to do that, we, we do this calculation. Um, we did it last uh, unit. We got 2.55. This is a right tail test, which means we're looking at the area to the right. And that should have been a clue because we had 2.55 standard deviations. All right. Finally, we have to decide, do we reject or fail to reject the hypothesis? And because our 2.55 has such little area after it, right? This is the p-value, the area after that particular z-score, then we clearly have to reject our null hypothesis. And so line eight, there is our final statement is there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that more than 50% of Americans are uncomfortable with drone deliveries. All right. And again, here is a picture of that piece, um, our proportion, our critical stat, value and then um, where we are zero zero five four way off to the right clearly out of bounds if i was doing this versus a review um, sorry critical value method steps one to five are identical as above we just have to find the critical values and since z is 2.55 and it's a right tail test then alpha turns into z 1.645 uh, and because the test now because 2.55 is to the right of 1.645 then uh, we fall into the region and we reject so our conclusion is the same critical value or the p-value doesn't matter confidence interval method this kind of confirms the fact that we did what we did above was right so we de determine our confidence level um, 0.05, that gives us a confidence interval of 
All right, and then from 7, 1, we know that if n is 1,005 and our proportion is this, then our interval is going to be between 0.514 and 566. Yeah, notice the interval boundaries are all above 50%. So this gives added credence to the fact that, yeah, half of Amer Americans are uncomfortable. We, we are safe to say that. So, hence, we can say with 90% confidence that the limit supports the claim that most Americans are uncomfortable. All right? Uh, sometimes you need to find the number of successes because of the test that you're doing, right? We need to know X. So, in this case, if they tell you how many and what your proportion is, just multiply those two things together. So, for example, uh, sleepwalker problem, which we're going to do in just a moment, has 19,136 uh, individuals. 29 approximate percent of them claim to have slept walk as previously in their life, which amounts to rounding up, rounding to the nearest, sorry, value, 5,588 people. So, uh, final example here with using a confidence uh, p-value, sorry, a p-value test. We look at uh, this population of people, again, the proportion of people in my sample who have sleepwalked, and we are uh, going to try to justify that 30% have sleepwalked during, less than, sorry, less than 30% have sleepwalked. Right away, this should give you an indication that we are looking with a left tail test here. So there we go. There's our claim and our alternative. There's our null and alternative hypothesis, significance level. Uh, Z is our proportion uh, test stat that we're going to work with. Boom. Negative 2.41 is our Z value. Uh, again, feel free to use uh, stat crunch to get that and this, right? Uh, no need to do it longhand now that you know how that works. And then, bam, notice here we have 0 0.008 is less than 0 0.05. So we reject the null hypothesis. All right? And then we write that in friendlier terms. There's sufficient evidence to support the claim that fewer than 50% of adults have sleepwalked. All right. And again, if I look at the confidence interval with that alpha and our 90% um, constraint, then we get an interval that both limits are below 30%. So we're confident that the proportion for the population is also less than 30%. Finally, an exact method. This is uh, unlike the previous one, which, is, which are approximations. Um, we are using the binomial distribution to find it exactly. Now, the reason we can do this is we have to sometimes um, that qualification gets in our way if n is in a large number, all right? And so this last example is going to look at a case where n is small and we cannot get away with using an approximation. So here we go, 10 couples, n. Uh, nine have a baby girl after being treated with some sort of method. Use the 5% significance level to test the claim that the probability of getting a baby girl is greater than 75%. Somewhat ridiculous, I realize. Uh, don't hold your breath. So again, n times q is 2.5, and that tragically keeps us from using the approximation. So we need to use an exact Fortunately, n is small, so we can get away with this. Um, because this is a right tail test, we want to find nine or more girls. So we go to our technology, and uh, I did it by hand, but you certainly can get these values from the stat crunch. Just grab the calculator, the binomial calculator, plug in your values, and then choose nine or more, and you will get this 2.44025. Or like me, go old school, figure them both out, add them up. 
All right, in this case, notice our value 2.44 is greater than our, in, our confidence um, significance level, sorry. Therefore, we fail to reject H sub zero. Um, there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that with this gender selection method, the probability of a girl is greater than 0 0.75. All right, so a little bit different than our previous problems. One caution is that the, um, the binomial probability distribution is actually um, too conservative. And so sometimes uh, our type one errors, which on the good side is less than or equal to our alpha, um, sometimes it's too good and it is restricts too many of our examples. So uh, the book talks about techniques, we're not gonna go into that, of how to uh, mitigate those issues, those errors that occur. So there we go. Again, a bit of a review, the 8.1, from 8.1. And I think 8.3 as well is gonna be looking at means. So it's just a matter of learning to use which test statistic as well. Good luck in doing your homework.